All right, so today I have Ms. Remy Davis, and she's a, a dancer, a model, a YouTuber, a singer, a rapper. A, <laughs> she everything in one. So yeah, Miss Davis, um, <clears throat> would you please introduce yourself? Yes, definitely. How you guys doing? I'm Remy Davis. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, but I now live in Atlanta. I think I'm going to be here for a little while. But um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to be interviewed. Um, I want to say this is probably my second interview, so this is definitely great, and I really appreciate it again. Um, I love what you do. You know, I definitely do respect it and appreciate it, so I'm ready. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> so, Ms. Davis, um, how long have you, what, which talent did you start first? Did you start singing first, or did you start rapping or dancing, or? started dancing first um i was in my junior high school was uh like a dance school pretty much and um they had a performing arts center so i pretty much got involved with gospel dancing and stuff like that praise dancing really mainly that um and then i gravitated into like jitterbug which is like that movie idol pretty much you know the dance style that they do throwing everywhere yes ma'am <laughs> so, but um, that and um, tap and stuff like that. Then eventually I got into modeling when I went to Barbizon Acting and Modeling School in Manhattan. Um, I graduated from there. It was cool. They, we did a couple of runway shows. And then after that, my brother pretty much pulled me into music. He started writing songs for me. Um, this was when I was, let's see, I was about 19. 19. So it hasn't really necessarily been long, you know, of me doing music, but it, I definitely have progressed a lot since 19. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> do you have any songs coming out? Yes, I actually have a project coming out. It's called T.O.T.M. Um, I'm not sure if I want to make that an EP or album yet, but T.O.T.M. pretty much stands for it. And this is where I'm explaining it first, by the way. I've never really explained this publicly. To hey, well, look, if you don't want to say it, don't say it. No, I do. I don't mind. You know, like, that's great. I would love to share this with you. Um, so, I mean, it's T.O.T.M. T.O.T.M. pretty much stands for a time of the month, right? Now, growing up, I used to hear a dude say sometimes, oh, you're acting funny. You're switched up. It must be your time of the month. It must be your time of the month. And it's like, no, you know, I'm just like tired or fed up, you know, just things of that nature. So why are you pinning my women problems on my behavior, <laughs> you know? So, and then pretty much it, my, um, my project speaks of how it's, it'll start off with a woman who pretty much, let me, let me give you a video idea. Like say she's in housewife attire, which someone would consider housewife attire, covered from neck to, to toe, right? Let's say that in a kitchen doing something, yada, yada. But eventually through the songs going through it, it'll express how she changed up and stopped conforming to this man's needs who weren't even suiting any of hers, you know? So she tapped more into her, her sexy side, you know, just a little bit, which a lot of women sometimes have a problem with doing so because the way that the world makes it is like we can't, be seductive, you know, in a certain sense. So um, this project is actually really, I'm nervous to put it out, but it's really good, um, really good. But I'm nervous because it's not my way of speaking. I don't necessarily say certain things, like, for example, like, I love them, but I don't speak as Cardi does, you know? I don't speak as Megan does. Uh, so, but I, I am, <laughs> you know, in this sense. But when you listen to it, it's not fresh. It's not putting a bad name on a woman you know and i hope that gets across to people <clears throat> yes ma'am um do you have a title for the project yet yeah that's uh i'm calling the whole project t-o-t-m pretty much so t-o-t I'm okay i'm tripping t-o-t mm -hmm. yes ma'am um how many songs is gonna be on it well right now i have seven and i was going to cut it at seven which would be the ep but I was like, why not go for the full 10 or throw a bonus track on there, you know? So it then turned it into an album. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you, have, do you plan on having any music videos for them? Yeah, I actually, so say if I get these 10 songs done, I honestly want to get at least five videos done. I'm going to pick, you know, a good amount because the project is set up where it's Remy Davis 
and Remy D, which is still me, of course. But again, Remy Davis sings, Remy D raps. So Remy Davis is going to be more so in the beginning, you know, with the little sad songs, <laughs> transitioning into the boss mood songs. But um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to pick five good songs from each uh, two different sounds that I have and do videos. Man, that's cool. So you don't even need no features, to be honest. You could do it all. <laughs> though like that's another thing i need to start involving because the only feature that i used to get all the time was my brother but again that's because he was writing the songs but um i actually started branching out with a lot of artists that have been trying to get features with me and i'm down i'm not gonna lie to you because these next few songs i might be a little lazy like one verse lazy you know <laughs> so, For but, real. um do you record at your house or do you go to a studio another studio it's called family through ties um and occasionally i record with my brother um but he has his own home studio but about i want to say six seven months ago i decided to buy my own equipment and set it up so now i have my own you know photo stuff i have my own studio stuff so i'm actually currently now working on beats i don't know if you've seen that but um i have a few beats uh, and I'm just trying to learn, you know, the music business ins and out, how to engineer and stuff. Yes, ma'am. So you making your own beats that you can rap in, you can sing to. Yep. And that helps me with a lot because that used to be a big problem sometimes dealing with people who go, Hey, I want to help you mainly guys. I'm going to give you this beat. I think you're dope. You write a whole project and then now they're looking for something from you, you know? So I just got so tired of that, man. So I was like, yo. How hard could it be? I'm about to go teach For myself. Real. So I pretty much was been doing that. Yes, ma'am. And you say you have a computer, right? Yes. Um, one thing I encourage on my other channel with all the guys who I interview, all, all the artists, like I tell them, like, hey, man, get you a microphone. Like, learn how to do it yourself. Learn how to mix and max it yourself. Everything on YouTube, bro, five-minute videos. Yeah. Like, it's going to show you how to do everything you need. Like, I don't know, like, if. I encourage all people, like, because sometimes, like, say the weather bad or the studio down or it's full, like, you can't go. What you going to do? Like, but you got a microphone right. in the house. You can record right in on the spot. It might be 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. You don't right. want to get up and go to the studio. You got something on your mind. <laughs> go to the, go to your little mini stool. Well, you right. can make it for real. And you know what's crazy? Let me show you something real quick. I got it right here with me. But uh, this was a gift from a friend a long time ago. Spire. I'm not too sure if you heard about this, but for artists who are i guess looking for like a spot to record this is a portable studio you can take this at the top of the mountains where the birds chirp and you catch everything so this pretty much is a portable studio um you can test your voice save your tracks uh you download i guess this app and mix on it but it's pretty good um it's really good it's not charged right now it's not coming on but usually the lights will be here every single time you talk you see the levels and stuff so this thing here is good too, you know, and it stores all of your music and you can take it when you're ready and send over the, you know, tracks to be mixed. So That's what's up, it. man. Oh, well, you yeah. good. You got it. You already on game. <laughs> you already on it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, All right. So, Miss Davis, my next question for you is who are some popular artists that you would like to collab with one day? That's my mom, you know, <laughs> got a collab with uh, Rihanna, but also Doja Cat. I love Doja Cat. I know uh, people was down her back recently about some things. Uh, I'm not even going to discuss that because I don't really know about it. But um, what I will say is I like Doja because Doja herself even started making beats. You know, that's that's another thing that I looked at. I'm like, man, look at her. She's gorgeous. She writes. Um, sometimes, you know, her songs may be a bit different for people, but I like that she creates her own stuff from scratch, you know, like, and she didn't necessarily even know what she was doing at first with making beats, but she kept it going and her beats are honestly dope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Shout out Miss Rihanna. Shout out Miss Doja. Nice. Hey, Rihanna, that's my, that's my <laughs> pretend wife. She don't know it though, but me and her secretly married. I'm telling you, everybody want Rihanna. <laughs> Real. But uh, who inspires me, though, to continue? I always had this feeling like I had to finish her dream for her and start mine. But Aaliyah, it's always been uh, 
a big, big role model still, even with today. I, I swear music would be so different if she was still here, man. <laughs> I swear. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right, so Ms. Davis, during this interview, would you like to uh, sing some songs or rap some songs later? It's okay. No. Say if no, it's okay. No, no. <laughs> For sure. I don't know. Because um well what it is is I'll probably rap something. But when I sing, I definitely sing very loudly and I have a house full of individuals right now upstairs. Everyone's doing things, everyone's this, but so I'm gonna try to keep it on the low low uh for right now. But I definitely could, you know. I could definitely I don't know if you've heard have you heard Victory? Nope. Mm mm. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. then, I mean, I could give you the verse to victory, the first verse. Um, pretty dope song, so I could do that. <laughs> For sure, that's that's cool with me. Um, I watch some of your videos, but like on on my Instagram, it don't. I be getting so, it don't give me like I don't know what it is when I first had. I'm all right, so I just got Instagram recently again. That's the one I got this channel. But it's like it used to be like every time somebody posts, you see it. Like boom, it's okay. Right. This person posted today. Uh two minutes ago this person posted this three minutes ago but now it's like it's random and it don't be yeah. i don't know how to explain it but it just be giving me the i don't know it, i won't be i don't know but i it gave, it, it gave me you some a couple times but not like that but like whenever i do see your videos i just heard you singing and you yeah, rapping I, it, uh, I mean that's actually what i've been dealing with too like so because i've actually been telling one of my homegirls i'm like yo i don't see you on your job, and well, you're not posting no content. What's going on? She's like, Well, you must be crazy to check my page. So I had to go type in her page. I'm like, Oh, I see <laughs> Right. Like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> For real. So now what I got is all the women who I interview, I got their post notifications on. So anytime they post on their page, I try to like it. But yeah, right. um, but sometimes, like, if I'm already on Instagram, it don't tell me. And I'm on Instagram a lot. <laughs> like, but yeah, um, so Ms. Davis, my next question for you is what um okay if the deals were right and everything was comfortable for you what record labels would you like to sign with mm, i was about to say none of them but no nah, that's only because i have all con- i have a bunch of contracts in my closet since i was like 18 i got a contract from def jam i've had an opportunity from quality control actually i was supposed to do that that i can't leave him alone that song whatever i got that good boy turn with the dope boy turning me on right that song i was supposed to do that but a uh, long story <laughs> long story um because you know i mean a lot of times i know labels reach out to you and i get that I get that there's sometimes a percentage that they might want you to pay, right? Now, back then, you always say, well, I've always heard if they want you, they'll pay, they'll take you. But what I'm getting out of this is, it's like this, labels, are, say a label backs a million dollars behind an artist, right? Just say that. And that artist didn't even, you know, that artist didn't even, didn't even go right. Or the mental, the mental state of that artist, you feel me, starts to go off and everything just starts to happen. So now that they've lost out on all that money. You yes, know? ma'am. So I do get the whole part of investing into yourself. But um, so sometimes I might not have had it, you know. And uh, sometimes I just might not have liked the opportunity offered to me, you know, if it was nothing that I had to provide um, payment-wise. You know, because sometimes, like I said, with trying to get in this business with being a woman, they try to, you know, like, it's like a, what are you going to do for me thing, you know? And it's like, well, I'm going to make you rich. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> but no, nobody's thinking like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> for real. <clears throat> I understand. Um, Miss Davis, my next question for you is, how long have you been dancing? just started back which i need to do because it's, it's definitely helping me back with my cardio after having my kid um i pretty much didn't wasn't as active you know as i was so i'm getting back into it now i call it free spirit dancing because i don't like learning choreography anymore it's too much uh but i've danced for about like six years there we go um what type of dances do you do so, you said free. Not, not stripping. No, not stripping. But <laughs> I got no problem with dancers, you know, but not stripping. Um, I like mainly like 
modern style dances or like jazz. Uh, I like ballet. I love ballet, but I dropped out in a week. Okay. <laughs> but I love ballet. But it takes a lot of muscle memory, you know, and it's it's really painful. And me, I kind of got out of it. But uh, or like it's just pretty much just regular, you know, hip hop dancing stuff like that too. Yes, ma'am, man. Shout out to all my dance, cause I know you, man. I I took a dance, I took a dance class twice in high school. Man, my teacher used, to, she used to tell us like, y'all look at my feet. This all dancers, y'all better get used to it. If you want to dance in college, you want to dance in the pros. Look, this how your feet gonna look. It ain't no better kids. They you can get them, but they're not gonna help. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Not It's in Brooklyn, um, Prospect Heights. Uh, is the main like Prospect Heights is the name of the school, but it's four schools in there. My school is Brooklyn School for Music and Theater. But um, I pretty much like all of my dance teachers from there were like Juilliard graduates, or they danced with um, uh, Alvin Ailey, you know, dance program. So they were strict. Like while you're in the split, might come and push you down strict because you're not splitting. <laughs> You know, For real. so it's like they feel like your bones got to be broken in to these things. So you might have some injuries for a while, but it's okay. You'll be flexible next week. Right? <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. For real, I don't. I can't be no dancer. Wow. I'm cool on that. Um. <laughs> So yeah, Ms. Davis. My next question for you is: Who were some artists that you would like to dance for? And like as a, in the background or beside him and stuff. Can I share my tea? So Go ahead, like, girl. I was like, can I share my tea? Okay, well, uh, the crazy thing is I wanted to dance for Chris Brown one time, right? Now, Chris Brown actually dated my god sister um, a long time ago, like before the first album drops, you know? And uh, I had an opportunity to dance with Mr. Chris Brown himself. These people ain't right, and I'm telling you, people are not right sometimes. They, uh, whatever. It's another story. I'm going to tell you that personally, actually. I'm going to write it down on my hand. Dance for, let's see. Right? Yeah, Chris Brown tried it. You can put that one. That's what I put. It. Chris Brown. Uh, uh, yeah, Chris Brown tried it. You can write that tried right Tried it. Here. And, uh, right, he tried it. But it didn't work, period, pretty much, because I wasn't willing, again. But, um... Uh, let's see, who I would honestly love to dance for. You know what? I would love to dance for Beyonce. It's just because she dances herself to it. It's just like it hypes you up when that artist is also hyped up. And true, um, Jennifer Lopez. She's dope. I like the way she dances, uh, just everything, and just the way she performs in general. Like, I would love to. I really would. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You said Jennifer. I forgot to say this, too. Shout out to Miss Aaliyah. That's my girl too. That's yes. my dog. That's my yes. dog. Love Aaliyah. <laughs> for I was real. Aaliyah for um Halloween. I actually went cause uh for her when she went to the MTV Awards, she had on a Bricklayers jersey, uh really old <laughs> Bricklayers jersey. But I had paid for that. I paid for that. It was some, you know, some money, but I did pay for it. Um, and I love it. It's cool. It was for Aaliyah. So. <laughs> for real, I put it on my wall like a flag or a trophy. <laughs> do that too because i'm pretty sure i'm i don't really want to wear it like i wore it that one time and i actually was really annoyed because like it's white too so you know people just drop and stuff on it i didn't want it to get messy so i think i might just hang that one up <laughs> that's a liability right there i understand yeah. mm -mm, i need that <laughs> yes ma'am um all right so miss davis oh okay so can you sing one of her songs not that loud If you don't want to, it's okay. You ain't got to. I just, all right, so I can't sing. So I be telling, I like hearing people singing, you know? Like, if we was friends, friends, like, if, all right, if you grew up around me in high school, I will call your phone like, hey, yo, Remy, hey, sing something for me, dog. I ain't feeling good today, you know? Like. I sing it with you. I sing it. Nah, I'm playing. I can't sing all her songs. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, only one I can think of right now is Your Love is a one. That's the only one I can think of right now. 
for real. So yeah, um, it's okay. We'll go to the next question, Miss Ray. Ah, you trying to get me? You trying to get me in here? I'm gonna loosen up eventually. <laughs> nah, you, you good? It's okay. Life. It's okay. I should have told you this before the interview, but it's all good. <clears throat> But the thing is, like, shoot, the reason why I did is because I ain't really expect, I don't know. I just want to ask you my questions for the women positivity. But now it's like, I was talking to you about your, you being an artist, and that's even better for me. Like, you know, you know that's like, shoot, I was going to post you on my music page if you was going to, you know, like, for real. So, yeah, um, Ms. Davis, my next question for you is, okay, so how long have you been a model? to it actually um i was looking into getting to so official modeling so official casting shout out to them they're really dope um very affordable they actually get all these women involved too so you know any women are seeing this so official if you want to get into modeling but um i modeled for since i was i started at seven and i stopped at like 14 pretty much so you know like i said i haven't really been doing that for a while um, and it was really mainly runway, of course, but I'm definitely trying to get back into it, but I don't think I'm fit for runway because, you know, they have certain, you know, different things they need from with your body weight and everything like that. And I really don't want to be a stick figure. I don't. <laughs> I don't really want to do all of that. So. I understand. And I'm short. Apparently, I'm short. I'm not tall. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, there's a lady who I just interviewed, well, a lady who I'm about to interview. Her name is Zai. Um, Zia Jordan. I just interviewed her mother as well, and she's like her fashion designer, her modeling culture, all type of stuff. So yeah, like I told her one day, I said, Miss Sean, Miss Johnson. I ain't gonna say her first name, but it's Miss Johnson. I was like, Miss Johnson, like I wanna um one day I'm gonna start my own modeling agency, and I want you to be the head of it. She's like, okay, baby, but yeah, she, it ain't nothing to me. She said. Uh, she, what you said she from she from memphis that's how she said what you said for real that's that's my dog though but yeah um but yeah my uh with that this being said is like shoot i'm gonna have all type of women it ain't just tall and skinny i'm gonna have big women i'm gonna have short women tall I, you know man look if you can stretch your stuff and look good and the way you dress you're gonna be on my team it, this stuff that's not okay though that's yeah. That's not okay. Like, man, there's so many women out here who have so much potential to be models and dancers and artists, but they get looked over just because of who, how they look. Like, that's stupid. That's what? That's Knowing good or what? Like, all right, so I know the country that we live in is uh not like it, but the internet is diverse. You can't. Yeah. You can't. No. <laughs> the, the what? Any. You can go on Instagram type Japan, Africa, Asia, China, America, anywhere you want and see something. So why are you going to, man, it's too many people in this world to not get. I think that's stupid. But anyways, that's a whole nother. <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that. So yeah, um, Miss Davis, my next question for you is, what's your Zodiac sign? I'm a Scorpio. Um, what do they say about Scorpios? Oh, they say. Oh, you guys are freaks. <laughs> well, uh, I guess you know to an extent, but uh, I mean that part just really depends on my partner. You feel me? How how I connect mentally and emotionally with my partner, uh, spiritually with my partner. Um, but um, also, I've also heard that we are very we we are like really involved with the arts, like very creative. Um, at least I am, you know, and I know a lot of Scorpios as well, very creative. Um, also, very, I'm, I'm going to give you one, I'm not going to do all, all uh, cons, I'm going to give you, a, um, I'm, I'm sorry, all pros, I'm going to give you a con too. <laughs> but um, we, we like to help a lot, but sometimes with, like, I, I notice that a lot of us sometimes feel like, we got it down pat already. We know it. So look, just take the knowledge in, you know, whatever the case may be. But uh, as I got older, I realized that I'm not fully listening. Like, I, I get it. I can get it. But how am I continuously telling people after they just said one sentence? Oh, I get it. Okay, let me tell you what to do to help yourself. Da, 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 da. Like, I had to learn what emotional intelligence is. Like, I have sympathy and I have empathy and I understand people's, you know, emotions and stuff. But just understanding emotional intelligence and how to just 
be quiet because I run my mouth a lot. I like to talk a lot, so I might miss something. You know, I might have, excuse me, in the past, mix something, miss something. But um, yeah, pretty much passionate. Sometimes debative. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, hey, I need to. I don't know. Well, look, on here, you can talk as much as you want. It's okay. You ain't going to miss nothing. <laughs> What's your sign? You ain't going to miss nothing. Say what you want. Um, But, yeah, Miss Davis, my next question for you is, what's your favorite color? My, well, I have three. So, in order, is pink, green, and blue. Um, Pink, I don't know. It's, it's pretty, I guess. <laughs> green, it's definitely relaxing. Kind of reminds me of nature money you know just success it's a color of success um and blue i've always liked blue but maybe i don't maybe it was just because all of my family members like blue growing up you know so i was like okay i like blue too (laughs) but uh i i I pretty much yeah pink green and blue (laughs) for real um what's your what's some of your favorite foods i love love pasta um, like all pasta, red pasta, uh, Alfredo, you know, just all of that. And also, I like empanadas. So, I always, um, I grew up around a lot of my Spanish family as well. So, uh, when I wasn't with my mom, I was with my titi, <laughs> you know. So, she used to always make empanadas, or as some call it, pateleos. Um, so it's pretty good. I like those. I like to make those. Like, that's one of my things. Like, if I'm invited to somebody's house and they like, yeah, bring food, bring things, I make empanadas. I'm an empanada girl. <laughs> <laughs> See, what? That's like some of my favorite food. My, my favorite food, lasagna, but I, I love empanadas and like, but we don't get into my legs, but we don't eat them like oh, that yeah. here. For real. Yeah, tamales. Those are good. I haven't had one of those in. I don't even know. <laughs> so cool. I haven't had a tamale forever. For real. Um, all right, so, Ms. Davis, my next question for you is, what's some of your favorite restaurants to go to? None of them out here, uh, Miss Rest It's <laughs> because... Um, I like, well, I used to love going to um, this place, BBQ's, right? BBQ's back home. I mean, granted, we got barbecue all over Georgia, but we don't have BBQ's. It's like an Applebee's, pretty much. But I honestly always felt like BBQ's give you way more food. Everything is just, it's so tender. Everything is good. Um, And let me see. The other restaurant. No, that's really it. I was always just really into BBQ's, but... Like, I go to a lot of restaurants out here occasionally. I like Benihana's. Benihana's pretty good, you know? Like, how they do the food and stuff in front of you so you can actually see what's going on. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My next question for you is, what um are some countries that you would like to visit? I honestly want to go to, honestly, I want to go to Egypt. And I've always loved Fiji, Egypt, and London, right? Those are, the, like, the places that I want to go to. Um, I have a lot of friends in London, like, a lot. London, like, it, it's just cool. I feel like I belong there sometimes. <laughs> like, me, I'm I'm always putting on accents, you know, something like that. So my friends are like, oh, you need to come out here. <laughs> you know, just like us. <laughs> but uh, they... they <laughs> They adore me, man, and I adore them. I just love it. And honestly, London looks like Brooklyn to me. It kind of looks like New York. And I've noticed that a lot of people from London do visit Brooklyn a lot, and a lot of people from New York end up in London a lot, too. So uh, we definitely have branched, you know, like that. But um, as far as Egypt, I've always loved um, Egypt, my Egyptian artifacts. My whole body I actually use for Egyptian artwork or just black work in general, um, uh, so I'm really serious on what I do put on my body. I love tattoos, but I make sure I put, you know, things that symbolize something, things that have meaning. Um, and as far as Fiji, I just like it. And it's crazy. I saw one picture one time I was learning about it in high school and I was just like amazed on how beautiful and clear the water is. Just everything was so nice. So I I've always said I wanted to go out there too. The closest I've got to it is Fiji water. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, like, you say you have a lot of tattoos. Mm-hmm. Um, what are oh, some? I need more. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What are some of your favorite tattoos that you have? Um, this one. I can, I can show this to you. You know, it's fine. Totally fine. Okay. This one. It goes into my onk. You know, into the eye. I love this. Definitely do. Um. I've uh I actually got this when my chain a little while ago got snatched, right? Something happened, and someone snatched my chain. And that was my aunt that I got from my grandfather who had actually passed away and I felt off, you know, I was like, dang. So um I actually went and just tatted it on me. There we go. You know, it's on here now. Um and also, uh shoot, I'm gonna show you like a few. But I have a crescent moon here and another crescent moon here. With my witchery, right? <laughs> nah, but I, That's I love, cool. I love the moon. Um, I love the moon, and uh, it actually symbolizes uh what I got. For, it's, it's like it's a goddess. Her name is Ikate. Some people say Hecate. Some people say Ikate. But um, she. I know she's the daughter of Perse- Perseus. If I'm correct, right? But um, she's like in between understanding the spirit realm and. You know, life on Earth, just things of that nature. But um, uh, reading into her story and everything, I just felt some sort of connection. And me, I always love the moon. I've always been highly connected with the moon. I actually get a lot of my energy from the moon, a lot of my inspiration from the moon. I meditate under the moon, um, yoga under the moon, <laughs> you know, just things like that. So, um, and lastly, I have Blessed by God right here and demigoddess on the other side so those are my favorite tattoos. <laughs> that's cool um i did not mean for you to come on my show and script i promise you i did <laughs> 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 i apologize no, i don't know no 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 i'm sorry i just had to show you the tattoo where it is that's what i was like wait let me try to you know a certain way but for sure you know. <laughs> well hey next question um and Ms. Davis, I, my next question for you is, what are some tattoos that you would like to get in the future? Well, I want to finish my back. Um, I, My back is literally specifically for, like, I want to do Egypt just all over it some way, somehow. I have King Tut right here, very big, uh, by the what? way. So I want to throw Nefertiti um, on the other side, of course. And um, I just want my back. And I, it's this quote that I saw on Black Love, you know, and how it should be. And I honestly want to find a way to put that quote in the middle of, you know, around what I'm trying to create as far as the mural goes for my back, you know. So you about to have like a whole mural on your back with a scribe in the middle. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Sure am. <laughs> hey, so boom. Sure am. I'm hey. going to have a few beautiful, strong, empowering um, black faces on me or just black, you know, our black stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Sure. Well, okay, so do you plan on having hieroglyphics? Did I say yes. hello? I'm not going to lie to you. I actually do plan on doing that, but not on that whole scripture thing I'm trying to do. Uh, I might actually pick two words with strong meaning, right? And pretty much put them, like place them somewhere. But I was thinking about that as well. I really was, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I only have one tattoo. I can't, I, I'm not tough enough. <laughs> Almost fought the dude. Hey, you, and the funny thing is, I always go, I always say I'm gonna stop. I always say I'm gonna stop. I always say I'm gonna stop, and then when I get in the chair, I'll be like, "Yo, didn't I say I was gonna stop?" <laughs> it hurts so bad, and especially this one here on the stomach. This was fine, but when we got down here to this eye, I was just, I was so ready to be done, and he just kept saying, "No, hold on, hold on, hold on," and just digging and digging, and digging. like, "No, just stop." But, I sat through because uh, I feel like, you know, at that, that point, once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> you cannot stop. You got to finish with the tattoo. So, but I always went back for more. Absolutely. That's cool. That's cool. I went and got mine with my, with my ex-girlfriend, and she was like, 
Okay, so boom, she went and got hers first. She said she went and get hers done first. Okay, boom, she went. And then she she just held my hand. She squeezed a little bit, but she weren't tripping or nothing. Man, I sat down in that chair. As soon as the boy put that needle on me, I, whoa, this not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> This is not what I thought it was going to be. Man, but it's like, I wanted to fight the dude. Like, that's going to hurt. And the dude was like, hey, man, um, you doing good, man. You doing good. It's almost over. It's almost, it don't last 30 minutes. <laughs> right, bro? He didn't lie to me the whole time. 30 minutes is a long time to be getting shaded in. For real, man. And the dude was, and my girl, my ex girlfriend, well, my girl, yeah, she was like, Oh, that didn't hurt. That was good. Oh, that was cool. I want another one. I'm like, girl. Mm-mm. She know it hurt. Uh-uh. She know it hurt. She know it hurt. When they was doing this here, oh, man. Because then you could hear the sound, too, you know? So I was just over here like, oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> For real, ever since then, I'm like, nope. No more tattoos. But, shoot, I just said, I just told my I just told my cousin the other day I want another one. But I don't know. Not you no know. time soon. Not no <laughs> time soon. But I do know if I ever get children one day, I want to have their little, they they handprints, like, on my back, so, or like a foot or something. I don't know. At least my first yeah. child. It's my first one. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I seen it one time, like, well, you know, boom, I'm going to say, let me tell you. Damn, this is your interview. I'm sorry, but I'm going to just say this last thing. No, no, this is fine. <laughs> we, look, that means we could get to talking for days. That means you're going to see me again at another interview. That's fine. <laughs> For sure. All right. So yeah, like all right. So my one day for one time for Mother's year, Mother's Day, it was like I was like fourteen, fifteen. Oh, uh, I got me. It's me, and I had two little siblings under me. You, you, you know, the twins. Boom. So yeah. So my dad was like, he was like, boom. This is what we're gonna do. I need y'all to uh do it. Put your hand on this wood, and I'm gonna trace it. Boom. So he traced it mine, traced my little brothers, and traced it the other one, my other little brother. And then he, like, carved it out and put, like, little designs on it and our names at the bottom. He wrote some messages on it, all on a piece of wood. Like, he just had a, a brick of wood this big. And then he made that jungle so pretty. He, we still got it right now. It's hanging up in the bathroom, in, in the kitchen. So, yeah, um, with that, I'm like, boom. I want to put it on my back, dog. <laughs> like, when I get kids, I bump it for real. My wife going to see it every day. For real. Yeah, for real, but yeah, um, that's it. I'm gonna just we gonna go to the next question, Miss. You were cool, Miss Davis. I ain't think you was gonna be. This. I mean, I thought you were gonna be cool, but I ain't. I mean, I thought you was gonna be. <laughs> but all right, so boom, no, cause it was like I thought you was gonna be like, all right, but I gotta, you know, like whatever. Okay, cool, but you, man, you humble, man, you nice, you cool, you chill to me. I we kick you come to my grandma's eat some food one day. We cool. Uh, she don't make some more. She don't mind. She don't mind. For real. Oh man, I appreciate it though. I really do. I appreciate when people see my character for what it is. You know, like so. I really do appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. That's cool. That's cool. Um. All right. So, Miss Davis, my next question for you is: Would you rather go into space or deep sea diving? think i might take that space yep because i want to see what what it looked like when i look up <laughs> like i mean like on, if i'm on the moon i want to see what it looks like you know like do i see the moon too i mean not the moon excuse me do i see the sun somewhere i don't know what am i going to see on space like i know what i see on earth <laughs> when i look up so i definitely wouldn't mind touching down on space being black on space you know in space definitely wouldn't mind for real for real um that's cool. That's cool. Um, if you get the space and you like it there, would you leave or would you stay? Nah, I ain't staying up there unless I got everything I need. Now, that's what nah. I meant. If it was, if you was having fun out there, if it was fun. If it was fun, I probably, probably. I ain't gonna lie to you because honestly, <laughs> sometimes I wish that I could just be in my own in my bubble sometimes because impressing people having to keep up with this all of this negativity you know just a lot of stuff is kind of washing the earth down okay <laughs> like for real so i probably would especially if i didn't have to pay rent you know <laughs> 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 like if i don't gotta pay, and if they got moon rocks on the moon no, please stop messing with you 
I'm not there. <laughs> For real. <clears throat> Absolutely. I man. Edit my interview. <laughs> oh, you want me to edit this part out? You want me to edit that part out? No, I don't. I really don't care. I mean, if it's if it's something that you have to edit out, you can. If you have to, that's cool. Other than that, I'm as real as this. You can keep everything. <laughs> hey, everything you said. So I usually write down what time stuff happened. Like, no, you good. This is a good interview. We we chilling. This ain't no interview. This a this a this a double TED talk. This is a TED conversation. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. <laughs> TED TED. Let's get it. It's cool. All right, so, Ms. Davis, my next question for you is, what are some of your favorite animals? I like cats a lot. Uh, people can't stand cats. They think they're feisty and stuff. But I think cats is cool. I mean, they only feisty when you want to bother them. Like, just leave me alone. <laughs> it's just like regular human. Like, just leave me alone. I want to be wild today. But um, I love cats. And let me see. Hmm. Cats, and to be honest with you, like birds, but like honestly, any kind. It don't even matter if it's that little ugly New York City bird that be standing at the bus stop with you. Like birds in general, because it's like they just they can fly, they can go wherever, whenever. It's just like a free looking experience to be a bird. <laughs> Real, absolutely. Um. My next question for you is, what are, okay, do you have any pets? I had, when I first moved out here, we moved out here with my cat that I had since I was a kid. And then we had got this dog named Tyson. I don't know why we named him Tyson, man. You are your name. Because uh, Tyson was bugging. Uh, but pretty much, uh, like, I don't know what happened. But my cat, after we kind of got this dog, just started failing. You know, breaking down, just getting old. So she passed away. Um, and as far as the dog, Tyson is untrainable. We've sent Tyson to multiple trainers and nothing ever worked. Um, but they said it's because he had like too many mixes in him. They said, quote unquote, too much, t certain things just don't mix, you know, certain whatever just don't mix. Um, but he was very wild, very rough, very vicious. Uh, so we had to pretty much in him you know what where we had to send him to we don't know what happened uh hopefully they were able to train he went him. he went he got adopted by another family <laughs> that's what happened he got adopted by another family i hope so i really do and i really like i mean tyson would have been great with like someone who lives on a ranch with no neighbors because <laughs> just one just one old man and tyson that would be great <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am um, my next question for you is, do you like to go shopping? I do. I haven't, I can't say I've been shopping for myself though in a while. Um, but I mean, yeah, you know, occasionally, occasionally, but I've never really like, I mean, when I do go shopping, it probably is shopping for someone else. I have a son, so it's probably for him. Uh, but something like that. Yes, so. yes ma'am. Um, <clears throat> How is it being the mother? It is amazing. It's, it's, it can be overwhelming, you know, sometimes, um, you know, dealing with little people. <laughs> it definitely can be a little overwhelming, but, um, it definitely just brightens my night. Like by nighttime, I'm like, yo, like sometimes I get a little down, you know, just some things I've been picking myself back up from. So just seeing my son. Is just like amazing for me. He's always looking for me. Uh, he doesn't want to go to sleep unless I come in the house. So he will sit up till four o'clock in the morning, you know. But um, I, I I adore it. I, I really adore it. I wouldn't change this for the world. Uh, I I feel bad for him sometimes, unfortunately, because of the other parent, you know, and things like that. And of course, you growing up when you have when you've experienced separation in your own family you try try everything you can by the time you have yours to not you know even if you're you know sacrificing your own happiness to stay you know for the kid to be raised with both parents involved but i realized that that was not even healthy at all you know so i i'm just but it's it's amazing it's amazing i love him he's great he is very smart um he was reading uh since he was two 
Uh, he literally knew all his colors and shapes at one. Uh, he is dope. And he had two teeth at two months. I say, yeah, this baby's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Um, what advice do you have to the upcoming mothers? Truthfully, the one thing my mom told me before I actually got two months in or something like that, she said, look, you don't have a baby for a man. You have your baby for yourself. So that way, you, you know, because a lot of times people do think that keeping you know, uh, whatever, or just having a baby with this man will keep the man. <laughs> That's not the truth, you know, all the time. It's really not. So if you're f putting more focus on anything else but your child, you're not going to be able to mentally and emotionally raise your child. Yes, ma'am. I agree. All right. So, Miss Davis, my next question for you is, what are your plans for the next five years? And what are your plans for the next 10 years? It's crazy. I just answered this question uh, four times today, too. No lie. Uh, well, <laughs> my plans for the next five years. Well, in the next five years, I should be graduated with my bachelor's, of course, in human services. Um, and also, I was looking into this place called Let's Talk Therapy. So once I get out of school, I'm going to take that... Um, internship i don't think they call it internship anymore but i'm gonna go take that opportunity and just pretty much learn more they'll um tutor me and get me ready for counseling in my own environment um so hopefully i'll be doing that but also my music of course if my music pops off first you know i'm out there on the music road but i'll never forget what i want to talk about you know i'll never forget Get that I still have another message to get across. So, um, say if I became an artist in the next five years instead, right? Say my, my artistry uh, broke off, then my plan would be to still open a place for the youth, you know, a center for youth for young women and men and single parents, you know. Um, pretty much, I might not be in there, you know, running it, but, you know, maybe you might want to, you know, you never know. <laughs> maybe you might want to or something like that. So, you know that and as far as in the next 10 years in the next 10 years i definitely see myself not working for anybody you know it's me shoot probably not even working for me right now because I'm, I'm home comfortable you know and just building on other stuff and investing into other stuff i don't know yet in the future what else i would want to invest into but i'm pretty sure i'll definitely find something else i want to get my hands on <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> My next question for you is what um okay, okay. So let me see how I'm gonna answer this one. Let me give me a second, let me see. Hold on one minute. I'm sorry. Let me check this up. Oh, no, she's still here. So I hear my little one knocking on the door, so I'm like, Okay, did my mom leave out? But <laughs> she's still here, so he's good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um what um okay i'm asked this question what uh talents do you have besides the ones that we know besides you being a dancer and a mother and a model and a singer and a rapper and a <laughs> yeah well again sir this thing where i'm always doing accents so either it's the london accents or um sometimes uh let's see <clears throat> Boom, my African family. What are you talking about, my child? You do not listen to me. All you do all day is not listen, my child. You need to calm down. Calm down just a little bit, please. So pretty much it's like, uh, well, you know, like, I mean, what you making? You know, like, I just always been the one to want to do little accents or impersonations. Uh, I think it started with Lois from Family Guy with that, Peter, Peter, oh my God, Peter. <laughs> After doing that and just doing all these other impersonations that I can do, and um, let me see another talent that I have. I'm I'm actually I mean I'm good with uh, artist development, and mind you, I'm still working on it myself. But I've I've definitely been reached out to people that want me to do management work and stuff like that, stuff like that. So that's another that's another forte of mine is helping people pretty much to grow with 
their artistry, you know, as much as I can. So, you know, sometimes, honestly, I get people further than I've got myself, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you do uh, Joe Swanson? Nope. <laughs> you took it too far. <laughs> All right. So what about um, uh, Herbert? Do you know Herbert? Oh no, I think I do, but I don't think I can do that. Like, nah, <laughs> I think I'm just stuck on the lowest thing. Nah, that's um, cool. Um, that's cool. Let me see. And then pretty much, like, not necessarily characters, but like I said, just other accents. I can pick it up just like that. Like, somebody can have a conversation with me, and in the next two minutes, after listening real close and seeing how the tongue movement is and everything, and I'll catch on to that. <laughs> that's what's up. <clears throat> that's what's up that's what's up all right so miss davis my next question for you is what is your message to the girls of the future who are 20 and younger and what is your message to the women of the future who are 20 and older my message to young women is to be honest with you you don't well i'm gonna make sure i say this right you don't have to conform to every little thing. Like, as far as in, like, sometimes, like I said, when, you, when you're growing up, people make you feel like you can't be, you can't speak, you don't have the freedom to speak. So it's like, speak up. Speak up. And speaking up doesn't have to be you using, you know, cuss words or just anything like that, but speak up and know yourself. Don't allow somebody else to tell you, I mean, you know, who you are and what you are. Know yourself. Know yourself, learn yourself, work on yourself, because there's always something that can be worked on. And sometimes when we are young, we feel like, uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm perfect. I'm good. I'm good. It's them. It's them. It's everybody else but me. So get out that self-centeredness as well. Cut a little bit of the pride, because this world will definitely have you carrying pride on your shoulder, and it will mess up a lot of things moving forward. You can't be moving forward with pride, you know? But... You know, just be strong and, and, and do do you. Do what makes you happy, truly, genuinely happy. Like, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> what would you like to tell your future self 20 years from now? Let's see. What I would like to tell my future self 20 years from now is to... Honestly, to, to continue to manifest, continue to manifest, continue to speak everything into existence and continue to act on it as well. You know, don't just don't just speak on things that, are, that you want to do, Remy, but not do it, you know, and better yet, instead of speaking now, let's just dive on into it and get it done. Pretty much. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> My next question for you is, what would you like to tell your husband 20 years from now? Let's see. What I would like to tell my husband 20 years from now is, you mean like in the next 20 years, what would I tell him? Or like starting now? <laughs> like, <clears throat> okay, so you're in your 20s right now. So your husband might be in your 20s whenever he's in his 40s and he looked back on this video. What would you like him to see? What would you like to tell him? If he looking right now, he's 40 years old. What I would like to tell him is, honestly, we made it. Because if we're together over <laughs> there, we made it. <laughs> like, no, we made it. Because, you know, a lot of people do separate. And um, it's just like, you know, I just hope that my partner, hopefully my partner in 20 years would have manifested with me, you know, enough to understand me as a being, for me to understand that person. There's no pride in between us, you know, and anything that pretty much is just blocking each other down. Like, um, people think being vulnerable is a bad thing. It depends. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it depends. But, um, you know, just, just, you know, and thank you for accepting me. I know I talk a lot. <laughs> you know, I know sometimes I'm getting... Like, I don't necessarily, like I said, like to start arguments, but I do get on my people about what they're not doing. Like, yo, let's get this done. We about to do this. We about to do this. We got this. So just thank you for trusting 
me to be the queen in your corner to lead both of us up this way, you know, and thank you for being the king in my corner. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I think he's smiling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, Miss Davis, my next question for you is, well, you say you have a, a son, right? Yes. Okay, so what would you like to tell your son 20 years from now? Honestly, I just want to tell my son that, one, I apologize. You know, like, it's not, it's not, you don't know sometimes how people are going to turn out to be. And so I just want to let him know that. But also, I'm sure I'm going to tell my son that I'm very proud of him because, again, he's smart. Today, he talks about being a doctor chef. He's always talking about he want to be a chef doctor. <laughs> he want to cook. And he's like, I just want to feed. He, he, used to say, he said, I want to feed the homeless. Like, I want to feed people who don't have. And at, at four, like I said, he's four, but he's been talking like this. So I just want to congratulate him and, and also tell him, you know, just I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you took pain and not dwell on it because I'm not going to allow my son to sit and soak in his pain. We got stuff to do, <laughs> you know? So I just, yeah, just let them know to continue. And even if I'm not here today, just always apply that knowledge moving forward and manifest, manifest. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Ms. Davis, are there any shout outs that you would like to make to your friends or to your family? Though you did not ask, still, I want to give you a big shout out because, again, I really do appreciate it. And I really I admire what you're doing. You know, I really do. And I mean that it's a genuine statement. Um, also, I would love to give a shout out to my son, Ahmad Gardley, for always keeping me strong <laughs> and always keeping me active and going. Um, also, of course, give a shout out to my mom because that has been the main parent in my life. You know, the main person in my family, just in my life, um, in my corner, though we've had our issues, she's never let me down. And um, I want to give a shout out to Family Through Ties because they're definitely working with me on this project. I appreciate them. My cousin Victor, he's awesome. He stays on me um, now today about marketing and branding myself. So he's a, a big um, empowering role in my music and how it's going to go, you know, moving forward. Um, also, would like to give a shout out to my guy, of course, you know, Devon. Got to do that um, because he's just so cool. Like, we're both Scorpios, and he's very understanding um, of me. And he just, he has so much compassion about me, you know, and I just, I adore that. It's just pouring all through him. So I accept that, and um, I definitely want to shout that out. And Chevy, and I think I'm about to be done. My um, He's my manager. We work together on a lot of things. We actually haven't been working so much right now on things because quarantine time, you know, but I want to give a shout out to him because he's taken his life back, you know, like at a point in time, he had a, he had a lot of things going on, but he's taken his life back and now he's in two productions that's out and working on another one, you know, so I definitely just want to give a big shout out to that. Mm -hmm. For real. And you said Mr. Devon. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Devon. Shout out Mr. Chevy, man. All right, so yeah, Miss Davis. Um, my net. Oh yeah. Oh, Mr. Devon, his clothing line. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Um, I think it's called the Villa Life. Don't get me lying, but literally, I literally just found this out that he's doing this because he wasn't doing it for a while until he got back on it. <laughs> yes, man. He's like when I say so dope. I mean, just the fashion. It's like. It's really runway fashion um and i appreciate how he's not he's not um what's the word he's not he's not homophobic you know anything like that because i know so many men who might be but he literally has like a bunch of different models as male models you know just everyone he gets whoever wants to be involved and whoever wants to really grow involved with his stuff so yeah definitely shout out to that clothing line because it's really it really is good like I'm sitting over here trying to pull things up, and my service was a little bad, but I'm it's impressed. Okay. That's why, and I'm not saying it because he's a dude. <laughs> I'm impressed. Man, tell him send me a hoodie if he if one day if I get big. Tell him send me a hoodie. I'll wear it on my show. You know what? <clears throat> there we go. I did find something. Oh right man. Here. So it's pretty much like this is a shirt. Uh, 
that he did. There's a a V. The VL is up there somewhere. But you know, it's like really, it's runway stuff. You know, it's it's dope. Like uh, it's another uh female model, I guess that he had with him. But what? You know, yeah. Oh, he fashion, he fashion. Like he is so dope. I saw this and I was shocked myself. Like even with this dress. <laughs> This dress here, it has like little prints and stuff on it, but it's nice. Like he, 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 <laughs> doing his thing. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. That's cool. Well, um, yeah, Miss Davis. My next question for you is, what would you like people to know about you before they go to your Instagram, before they go to your YouTube? What I would like people to know about me before they go on any of that is. Don't, don't think you know me. Try to get to know me. Simple. Because sometimes people might think what they see is what they just know. You know, just did people write a story, right, just based off your content. And sometimes people, that content, it, it probably be fake. Not saying mine, you know, but just different people's content don't necessarily tell their story sometimes. So how about instead of thinking you know me, ask me. Get to know me. Because I'm pretty cool. <laughs> for real. I can vouch for that. I was one who was like, look, I don't want to hit this lady up. She might curse me out. But <laughs> for real. What should we I'm, cool. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sensitive person as well. You know, like I really am. So if you got bad intentions, you're rude, you're negative, you're mean, please just stay over there. You know, because me, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm open to all people. I allow people to. I take what people tell me. Like, you know, that's what you're telling me you are. You're a good person. You're great. I'm going to give you that chance to show that I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, but, again, you know, just come to me genuine. You know, just come to me genuine because losing a person like me, rather than be a friend, associate, you're going to come back. You know, you're going to come back. Like, you want to you talk. You want to talk. And me, I'll probably be there to still talk because we won't be the same. But, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And yeah, yeah. Since I met her, ever since I met her, she been showing me nothing but respect. I ain't gonna lie to you. She been nice to me every day. She ain't no. For real, I, I I appreciate you for that. And I, man, I gotta let that be known. You show me nothing but love. For real, I appreciate you, Miss Davis. Thank you so much. I appreciate you too. And I'm definitely going to show way more love. Um, I I'm always showing love to people, but sometimes you give love so much, and then it just gets, you know, it gets crapped on and you just kind of stop extending your help stop whatever just trying to chill man whatever but as long as you know i like again i like what you're doing and i think it's very genuine and you got me involved with this and i've never really like i said done something like this my second time so i i appreciate it again i just keep keep saying that because i do <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am well, miss davis anyway i can help y'all please let me know um my next question for you is how do you feel women are represented in the world? Honestly, <laughs> truthfully, as what we have seen to display ourselves as now in this world, to be totally honest with you. Um, I don't feel like, well, in the beginning, I don't feel like women were getting enough respect until we fought for it and got it. But then it seems like as we fought for it and got it, we could we totally lost it, you know, like with the, just the way you display yourself. And then, you know, it, it, people put themselves on display as fresh, you know, and certain things like that, but want respect. You have to respect yourself first. You know, if you're not respecting yourself, you're not going to get that back. Um, so, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And then sometimes, again, like I said, I feel like women are shut out. But that's because, again, given the chance to show and prove what you fought for, not showing that and proving, you know, what you fought for, it takes away from the other ones who actually are trying to be women <clears throat> for real. You know? so. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My next question for you is, ooh. Okay, so my next set of questions I'm going to ask you about, I got like three or four more questions. Now, this set of questions I'm going to ask you is going to be towards the African community. Um, if anything I ask you that you don't want to answer, please like, say no, skip a pass, and that's fine. Okay. Um, my first question for you, Ms. Davis, is <clears throat> do you believe police brutality is real or do you think it's made up? I honestly do believe police brutality is real. 
brutality is real and that is just because it has been proven and shown so many times um you know like it's like I've, I've seen too many videos. You can't tell me it's not when there are videos of people who might just be literally minding their business. And I've seen cops come in. Hey, you got a black truck. It's you. And instantly, you know, it's, there's no questions asked. And then again, you can't tell me it's not because there was, there's been multiple videos where you see a white male shooting into a crowd of people. And did you see all of those cop cars just going past him? He has the big old gun right here. You're going past him and you're going and you're targeting them, that community, the black community, you know? So I definitely believe that there is police brutality and, you know, racism within the police department. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, have you personally or do you know anyone personally who has had negative interactions with the police? Well, truthfully, when I first moved out here, um... I wasn't really thinking about where I'm at now, you know, like Georgia, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that, but, um, I have actually been trailed about two times and I walk, I'm a female and I was walking to the store one time and I even, you know, you, sometimes you can't overthink. So you got to try to test it out to see if your thoughts are right. So I actually cut a few corners that weren't even mine. Okay. And then even cut a way back and I've been trailed. I've been cut off while I was walking. Um, one of these police guys, as I was going across the street, he stops here. So I'm like, because he didn't pull down his window or nothing, I can't see it. So I was like, you know what? Cool. I tried to walk forward, drives up, stops there. I'm like, and he, no rolling of the window down. So I say, you know what? Back up now. Back up. Back up. I sat on the floor. That's exactly what I did. I sat on the floor like this. And then, like, people started looking around, and then I guess this lady that knew my mom, she was like, you okay? Why are you on the floor? And he drove off, you know, after seeing that. But I literally sat on the floor, just put my hands up. I guess I'm going to be sitting here. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. Um, Home. As far as, like, as far as any, like, deep brutality, um... Not necessarily. Um, I don't really know. I can't say I personally know. I'm lying. My grandfather, and that's exactly why he joined the police uh, department a long time ago in his days when the uniforms were gray. Um, he always used to say, don't trust the gray boys. He always used to say that. I didn't know why until today. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm glad that you're still here, Miss Davis, because that one interaction could have went, you know, it ain't, that ain't good, you know, I'm glad you're still here, um, <clears throat> my next question for you is, can you, can you send a positive message to the negative members of law enforcement on treating us equally? Yes, it's like this, when we get up in the morning, well, I'm not gonna speak for we, when I get up in the morning, I don't go outside and judge anyone based off their appearance, you know? And it it's very downputting, you know, I it's very downputting to continuously feel like you have to be in fear. And it's not even of yourself, it's of your kids, you know, of of just all of that. And I really wish that there was some way somehow for everybody to push a restart button <laughs> and rebrand but in the right way because if it was never, I mean, granted, I do think that there are some people who literally get up and see a color and just be so disgusted. But that's a personal issue in you that you need to work on. It has nothing to do with me, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I honestly just would, would just say we just really need to try to come together and talk the best way we can. And everybody has to realize that how, how can you speak of you being so understanding? I'm so understanding. Oh no, I I I, I'm, I love people. I understand the third, but you're not understanding this situation here, which is hurting people. So, pretty much, yes. Just bringing that to to people's light because a lot of people are very narcissistic in this situation. Because again, we say, oh, I would never hurt someone, but you you hurt that black man. You feel me? Or, oh, I would never, I would never. You you love and protect your own, but you're trying to kill off someone else's. If you don't like us, just leave us alone. <laughs> you know? Like, just do your job. As far as if, if if we did something bad, for real, for real, just like if anybody else, then if we gotta get arrested, we gotta get arrested. Sometimes you did something bad, but stop, just stop the madness. <laughs> it's mad. 
Um, <clears throat> I think all members of law enforcement in the United States should take a diversity class. Um, that's uh, I don't know if that's gonna help, but yeah, hey. I detect the test. <laughs> <laughs> People always say, even with the court situations, right? When they want you to come do your little community, whatever thing for court, um, they ask you, are you racist? Right? They will ask you that. Do you have any problem with anyone who is not of your color? People say no all the time. Take a lie detector test. If you're a cop and you're going to do this job, that's the only way you can know to trust one of them. For real. If we giving up baby daddy's lie detector test, then this person a lie detector test. What we need to do is do it this way too because it'll tell you right then and there if that's the only way to really know the truth besides when you get to god right then what you need to do is anybody who's here to protect and serve every individual should take a lie detector test i think that's a fact i think you ain't say nothing wrong doing that training first thing first day <laughs> you got these questions bro how do you feel about black people how do you feel about latina people how do you feel right. about Caucasian oh, people? Right. <laughs> like, all right, so boom. And any time an officer shoots his gun, he need to take a lot of te tests and say, was this because of your safety or for the public safety or was this because you wanted to kill somebody? Exactly. I agree. <laughs> we need more <clears throat> mo minorities in office. That's all I'm going to say. We can get stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> like... 10 ain't enough, bro. That's all I'm going to say. But, yeah, Ms. Davis, Um, my next question for you is, can you send a positive message to our brothers and to our sisters on coming together? Yes. Um, what I want to say is we have to just make sure that we remember that we literally are one. Yes, we're individual, but we are a whole a community, you know, and it's not even, like, unfortunately, when I say this, I'm actually branching out, like, into all people, just people in general we are but as far as black people like i said we just need to remember that and and then and then be strategic in what you do please please think about what you do because because we think we may have a plan which is now we get upset and want to burn everything up in the world and break everything up in the world be strategic about this don't because see the thing is we don't stick together as a community sometimes how i feel but they do right now, that's why they always have the plan ready for the next move to make. We don't. We just sometimes think about out of anger sometimes, out of rage, which I get and I understand. But when you're thinking and making plans out of anger and rage, you're not thinking about the aftermath, you know. And now you have no plan once you're in this aftermath. So just be strategic in everything you do. Think, be logical, you know, and just for real. <laughs> like, just protect yourselves the best way you can. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Oh, um, Miss Davis, my last question for you is, what is your, can you send a positive message to our black women around the world? Yes. Uh, my message is continue to love your kids, love your children, focus on being the best version of yourself that you can be for you, for your kids, and moving forward for your future husband, seriously. Because, again, we put a lot on how we expect our men to care for us. But we need to remember, too, as women, if we're nurturers, nurture and be nurturing. <laughs> you know, do, do like this. It's like, and, and it, it's, it's as long as that man, you feel me, is 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 doing right for you. As long as you you feel like he's uplifting you. And just in general, in life, do what you want to do. Chase your goals, you know? If you want to be a fireman and they tell you that you don't have the ability to do so, show them wrong, you know, and do that. So, so. <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Well, Ms. Davis, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on my show. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask you or anything that we didn't talk about that you would like to say? No, we talk about a lot. <laughs> a great conversation we talked about a lot i'll just definitely be ready for you the next time <laughs> i'll be ready to uh you know to perform and do all of that stuff and also i'll have some questions of my own after reviewing your work some more i'm gonna go and look into a couple of the videos you did um with other women i've seen about two three but i'm gonna go look in deeper you know and to just see um, because honestly, this is great. Again, this is something that I even thought about getting into. So it's, it's going to be dope to learn from you. Put it like that. 
Yes, man. Well, hey, if you ever need, uh, if you ever need to interview me for your channel, let me know. I'm glad I will help you out any way I can. Um, I got you. We probably gonna do that real soon. Then. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, Miss Davis, I wanna tell you, thank you again for coming on my show. I, I, it was an honor to have you. Thank you so much, too. It was so great just having this conversation with you. It really was. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.